Let's see. Cross your fingers. It says 60, that's something. It ain't great, but. I don't know how great our compression tester setup is, neither, though. I would say. We're gonna go, yeah, it's like 60 PSI. Again, I don't know how good this setup is. At least it's something. I think we should start with that. Maybe we'll put some of the points back on and we'll see if it has spark. I think once we get it to run a little bit, that number may come way up, I'm hoping. Plus we gotta still adjust the valves yet too. One thing before we put that back together, I think we're gonna need to uh, make a file across those points. They're kinda on the cruddy side. See if we can do this for you guys seeing. <laughs> There's actually crap falling out of it as I don't touch it. Let's leave it open and do one cut at a time. I could probably use a condenser. They look like they were they were baking a little on the hot side there. goal is I would like to get it running just to see how the trans is you know got burnt on the uh, the SL125 we got it running and after we got it running I had a bad second gear I didn't, didn't know it I had to tear the engine out and apart not that we won't do it on this one either that should be enough to get a spark let's go pop that back together Shall we? The points are opening. It looks like it was run dry though. It looks like the... Cam had no lube on it. And the tab is pretty much burned away. It shouldn't affect us for this. Can you guys see? It has a kill switch. On position. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, that's a sweet time. You guys can see we are looking right there. You know what's next, don't you? Let's see if we can combat some of the questions that are going to come at me. Yes, it has oil in it. I'm going to leave everything open on the top. It's okay if it spitters some of it out. We're going to go give it a little bit of fuel down the cylinder. And for some reason, a lot of people get angry that don't tighten the spark plug and I just kind of thread it in. It's okay. I'm not running it permanently on that. I'm just testing it. And it allows me to get the plug in and out fairly fast while I'm trying to test it. I'm not losing that much compression. It's not going to damage the threads. It's fine. Really, trust me. Now, if you ran it that way for a long period of time, that might be an issue. But for the eight seconds it's gonna run if it's gonna run shall we let me get you set up we are a little tight for space because i had to bring crusty back in for the thunderstorm so you can get up here without embarrassing myself too much we'll try kicking it
compression does not feel great. Let's try hooking the drill up to it and give her an earth spin. Copy you going right now. Yeah, because the plug's not tight. No. We can see if the plug is the bridge of the plug is the bridge of the plug, the plug bridge. Now it's still a spark. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hook the drill up to it and I'm going to spin it for a couple of minutes and let that everything kind of polish itself up a little bit and see if that will help it. The carb's got to come off it anyway. Let's, um, I already took the two screws out and started getting the, the slide out of it. Hopefully the slide will lift up out of it. Halfway up. See if we can push on that. We should probably grab a little piece of brass rod or something. Just so happens to be a little bit of brass rod right there. Come on, there you go. Feel like a doctor. Got a bunch of crap in it, it doesn't feel terrible. Probably wouldn't hurt to shove a little bit of intake valves you know it's one of two things that we're having an issue with either the valves are not sealing completely and it's leaking air out around them or on the bottom end the rings are not sealing and it's leaking around there so by spinning it you kind of let the stuff wear in a little bit All right, I'm gonna go back to the drill and keep spinning it a little bit Do this more with the plug in it. Plugs back in. And the reason why I want the plug now, I want to kind of develop compression. And the compression sometimes will help push the valves up into place and help them seat a little bit better. And the same with the rings. It 
already feels a lot more than it did before. You could tell, you even hear it in the drill, how slow it's kicking. Go the wrong way. There we go. <laughs> you got to jump all over the place. Back you up. I look over the camera's dancing. Let's do another compression test. All right, round two in compression. Let's see if it's gotten any better. We are at a hundred pounds. Awesome. That is much better. All right, I know people are going to say it, so I figure I'll, I'll jump on it ahead of time. The carburetor, because I took the carburetor off, people are going to say, no, you had a, the intake was blocked and not allowing it but when you first notice it that throttle was halfway open on the bore when i showed you so it wasn't like when i was cupping my hand over it you saw you saw how it ran faster with my hand was cupped over it and then ran slower when i didn't that's because air wasn't allowed to come in so it wasn't fighting as much air wasn't making as much compression when i was choking it off like that and when i let air flow through it it was allowed to fill the, the cylinder up with air and then compress it and release it but the carb was open, so that was not the issue. It was just stuff not seating correctly. All right, let's go give her a little squirt down the intake. Hopefully it revs and pisses oil everywhere. Wants to. Not go without the carburetor on there though. <laughs> when you guys want to hold the drill or put a little bit of fuel in that while I'm trying to do it. We'll give her one more shot and then we'll put it to rest. We'll work on the carburetor. I just don't have that many hands. Is there any little bit of starting fluid behind us? What's that say? Engine start. I don't know if that's going to help us either. Just not enough volume. But you know what? I say we are close enough that, that it will run. I already started the uh, ultrasonic cleaner warming up and we'll get into disassembling that carburetor and see if we can get that back to functioning. All right, one more time. <laughs> All right, now I'm happy. What kind of goodies you think are going to be inside here? I stab myself in the hand. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. That might be an issue. 
I thought that was a jet. It was just a piece of crap that was formed to fill that. Oh boy. It's always the carburetor, right? Floats don't move. Floats don't move and it rubs. Hmm. What is this carb? I wonder. Do you make a replacement for this? Can't give up that easy. I have a feeling that float's going to be no good. Let's get the bail out of our way. I'm going to take an air gun and blow some of that crap off of there so we can actually see the components that are in there. Hold your breath. See what we can do. Get that pin out of there. I'm not sure which way it was driven in. Let's go try it this way first. There it goes. I think I might have a used float left over from the, the CB350 project. One that we soldered back together. It worked, but then I bought new ones for it. That's getting ahead of ourselves. I need something a little bit longer. How about we clip some vice grips to the bottom of it? We tap on it. I think that'll work. Should be almost out. Just don't have nothing. Uh... There we go. Yeah, they are feeling. I could feel the two halves moving. Yeah, I don't think we are going to be saving those. <laughs> that might be an issue. At least the needle moves. So definitely not going back together with that one in there. I'm going to go look into seeing what a replacement carburetor costs for this. I think for our end game. Oops. For our end game, it might be a better outcome especially if it's cheap if it's really expensive i'll move forward with this but if not we are definitely going to end up spending enough just in parts to repair this one and if they make a knockoff for 40 bucks might be a better way to go i already got the parts cleaner going did i just kill that i need a very Thin, you know, thin screwdriver. Hold on. Stay with me, please. One more second. Need your weight. Let's see if we can get underneath that guy. Okay? Let it soak. Let's see how it looks at least. Yeah, I'd say his bike sat for a while, huh? I don't know if I want to try taking those jets out first. Actually, this one we could wrench on right there. Should be a unthread it. And then we should have one on the outside. Let's see how this one does for us. Just as cruddy as the rest of it. And we need to get a little tiny wrench to put right on there. 
No need to be working over the vise anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna go take a minute and just kind of scrape off all, all the heavy, heavy crap just because I don't want to contaminate my um, cleaning solution you know, as much as possible. I'm going to get rid of the heavy, heavy crap. Sometimes I forget about where you guys are looking. And I start looking where I want to look. Just give you guys like a remote. <laughs> you can steer the camera where you want. I think they have that, don't they? Like a 3D or 360 they call it. I know they were playing with that a little bit and then it seemed like it kind of went away. Cycles. Right, so I'm gonna go blow that off of air. We'll throw that in there. Let's see how it does. Oop, I got one. Come on out. Yeah, she's a peach. Into the stew you go. And yes, I finally added more fluid. Let me make it under. That's still just heating up. It's only halfway up to temp. I'm gonna go throw that on vibration about a half an hour and let it cook for a half an hour. I'm gonna go on inside and see what we can find on the old uh, interweb for replacement parts. Get in there. Let it go for another half an hour. So in the inner sanctum of the backyard, I have a stash of stuff. And I say we should probably go shop in here and possibly maybe we could find some parts. We'll grab that one. That's way too small. way too big who knows the, the float is the thing we mostly need let's grab that one looks pretty close to the style does it have the lever for the choke no it has the plunger style grab that one okay I think I paid five bucks for this whole box of swap meat that has the lever type. What brand is it? It's the same. We'll grab that one. We'll grab that one. See any more? I looked online, I really didn't find much for um, an aftermarket. They had aftermarket ones, but it, you know, it fit 3,000 different motorcycles. And it generally means you have to do a, a ton of fabric, fabrication to get anything to do what you need it to do. That's that one. We'll throw that one in the mix too. Bring our prizes back to the garage. I don't know 
one that dropped on the floor. So we are looking for a float that looks like that. <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> what I asked for, right? So maybe they're looking pretty rough already though. So that's a, which just fell out. So that's a maybe. Set that one to the side. See if we can find a better, there's another one with a bail on it. At least they're puffy. Hmm. You see anything that we shouldn't be? That might work. Let's see if they, how much they crush. Probably shouldn't do that. that one the other ones we need to unscrew make sure that they'll even fit in there right, I'm gonna go in I think these are gonna be too small right off the bat I don't think it would fit in that one and that one looks actually even larger so I'm gonna go crack those other ones open see if we can find a viable candidate and let's see if dinner well, the float's still floating, that's a good sign. Let's just say it stands a much better chance than what was in there, right? Looks pretty decent in the float ball. Go see if the air gun will kind of beat that up a little bit and maybe knock some of that off. I can hit it with a sandblaster, but I really. Yeah, let's go get on the bench, take some of the uh, other pieces out of it now, and see how it looks. We'll make a decision from there. Sound good? Started on threading that guy. I already spit the gasket out. I think the one on the other carb though might be the same thing. We'll steal that again. Uh, a gasket set or a carb rebuild kit, I should say. Was I did see for 40 bucks. I'll probably go for that. That is not gonna fit, is it? Clean that up. Let's see how well this stuff is on here. Yeah, I think I'm going to throw it in the sandblast cabinet and give it a what for. Can I get that emulsion tube out of there? Up in the center is there. Did that move? I think it did. Going in. Actually, I don't want to hit on those. Let me. Uh... Actually, I can push right down from the top. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? Probably get a punch. Let's tap on that light. If it moves, good. If not, we got to go back and get a punch. Oh, it's going. Got it. I want to 
deform the top of it, you know. Let's... I don't think we're going to hurt anything. Yeah, let's go hit it with a sandblaster, see if we can knock some of this uh, white corrosion off of there. Probably... We already beat the factory finish that protects it anyway. It's already gone. So I don't think we're going to hurt it much. Alright, so we... This is the parts one. We'll get that out of our way. This is them after sandblasting. It's okay. We're definitely going to have to work with what we need to work with. The needle and seat is going to be a combination of parts from both of them. This is the original seat that was in it. Yeah. But the other one actually looks... The needle looks better on the other one, but the seat looks worse. This is, here's the seat out of the other one, as you can tell. I could possibly clean it up, but it looks like it has more stuff growing in it than this one did. So we'll go with that. It's got a good seal. The other one crapped out. It's over there. And then this is the needle. This is the needle from the parts one. So we'll put that in there. All the threads are a little on the coarse side, especially after you hit them with a sandblast. I'm looking for a 10 millimeter behind me. the socket. I guess we're going with the wrench. All right, about that. Go in. We need to tap that back in. We should probably let me go get a punch for that. Should have done that the first time around too, but there it goes. And that gets followed by this. Everything I prepped everything ahead of time. Cleaned it out. Hopefully that's gonna start for us. The the top end of this has gotten totally beat up. It's, it's missing part of it due to corrosion. We may have to... Oh, there it goes. Nope. We may have to do a little bit of filing. I'm whacking it down on the bench. I'm sure it didn't help it much either. Start for me. I'm just gonna go round and round and pretend. Was that a ten? It looks smaller than a ten. Yeah, it's smaller than a ten. It was. Bet you it's that wrench that was laying around. Okay, man. Are you straight? Batteries flashing on the camera. Does not feel good. Anyway. I have to change the battery in you, and I have to fondle that hole. New battery. Fondle my junk. Might be it. Let's see if that pushes up. I think we got it. As long as that doesn't move down. Yeah, we got it. That's run all the way up against that. I think this is just how much corrosion there is around the end of that. No way to tell, right? Let's go through the bowl on it. Yeah, the bowl doesn't bottom out. Yeah, we got it. Okay, what do you want to do next? We can do the needle and seat. Let's see how that wants to, how well that wants to play. The other needle to the pin on top it's got a little spring loaded pin i'll get it spring loaded pin is is uh jammed on that one that's the one that was in there that's the one we're putting in a bit of a difference huh i 
and our float. Which way did it go? Did it go that way? Or did it go that way? Well, judging by the stains, I would say it went that way. Let's go find the best of the two pins to put in there. It doesn't move back. The best of the, is the old one still in the other carburetor? Yeah, it is. Yeah, about the same. Go for that one. You want to try to find the non beat up end, which unfortunately they're both beat up on this one. And <laughs> How about the other end? I'm going to go clean the end of that up on a grinder, get a little bit more of a point to it so that I grabbed it with the vice grips. There you go. See how that works for us. That's better. Just an idea what our float's going to be like. I'm, gonna I'm going to put my mouth on that, blow into it, make sure I can't blow into it. And when it clunks the other way, I'm going to make sure that I can. It'll take gas in, flip it over. It's not sealing. It's not sealing in the, in that position. Sealing without the bowl on it. Let's try it again. I wonder if it's dragging on the sides, maybe. Now it's working. Let's try it again. Now it's hanging up. What do you think it's hanging up on? I'd say, I think that side, that side looks like it's kicked in a little. It's, I'm going to look under the scope. I want to make sure we're not rubbing on that. You see it? Actually, I think that is what we're rubbing on. So she has to, can we squeeze it? It's like a good place for a dent, doesn't it? Let's see. We can do a little bit of... That's wrong side. I don't want that side. That, that side to dent. I want this side to go in. I'm not giving the longevity of that very long either. I'm willing to bet the soft joints are uh, just this side of ready to let go. Again, that way, and back. Just got it. You want to go through? Just give it a couple of cycles. We are going with that. Seems to hold. Alright. So we have. We got one to go down inside there. Yeah, look into the scope. Some people ask why I don't use um, torch cleaners, and I do. Here's the problem: the torch cleaners do not go down small enough sometimes for some of the finer jets. Just in, for example, is this one right here? Is yes, we got the wire bristle to go in and pierce that one. But if I take the smallest one on here, watch it go right through and make me a liar. You can't get it through kind of jams up so that's why I go with the wire brush and that should be everything in the bowl and that crappy old gasket back on there is that gonna cause us an issue hope not and we gotta 
put our bale back on. Where is our bale? Where did the bale end up? See it? Come on now. Because it's right in front. You did see it. You weren't telling me. Which way does it go? I think it goes like that, right? Always reminds me of a massive cylinder. I guess they plan on this bike getting uh, dumped in the water a lot, having to clean the bowl out. Feel okay? One last blow test. It's off. Flip it over. <laughs> Gas goes in. All right. And time for the phone. So we got two last screws to put in. One is going to be the throttle stop, which I believe is going to be the longer one. Yeah, the one with the thumb wheel on it. What that one does is it, this one stops the slide for your idle speed. Let's see down the center over there, you can see it. So the more you run it in, the slide that goes in it, it has a ramp on the side of it and just kind of holds it up or, or down opens the throttle just a little bit and has you fine tune your idle speed. You can do that while you're riding. You can grab, just grab it with your fingers. You don't need a screwdriver. And then we have a mixed screw, which is, yeah, looking at the scope, it's either going there or there. That one doesn't have threads and that one does. And I think, they're pretty good to go. We'll run that in until it fits. And yeah, we'll give it a couple of those. We'll start with that. Back together. So I'll take a second. Here's that slide. See that cutaway that's in it? And it's on an angle. That's what that screw runs into. And then it just kind of pulls up a little bit or lets it go down a little bit for your idle speed. This is letting air in. This is metering the fuel going in. I said the carbs bolted back on. I'm gonna probably just run a piece of fuel line, clear fuel line like I normally do. We'll fill the fuel line up because we're only gonna run it for a minute or two. Well, let's, before we do that, we'll put the valve covers back on, tighten the plug up, see what we can, if we can get the exhaust back on. It's missing 90% of the flange that was on there. Or at least maybe we'll just kind of stick it in the hole and let it uh, direct the exhaust uh, towards the back. And that cover on the other side we should probably put on too. I don't think we're gonna need to start it with the drill. Now that I just said that, we screwed ourselves. Yeah, so let's go button that stuff up and then we'll give her a shot. We're all put back together and the fuel is filled up to right there. So that should give us enough to run for a minute or two. It's like it's leaking right at the, right at the base gasket. We kind of figured that gasket was shot anyway. The money shot, maybe. Joke's on. Let's, uh, we should probably grab ourselves a little screwdriver so that we can have it nearby to tweak. All right, come on now, where you hiding? the carburetor.
<sighs> Wonder if it lost spark. Yes. <laughs> awesome. How's that, huh? I'm psyched. Awesome. Got a bunch of parts to chase. Everything, nothing's dialed in. You know, the ballasts aren't adjusted. The time is not set. Points aren't adjusted. You know, that kind of thing. But uh, at least the basics are there. It runs. That carb should come back with a carb kit. And, uh, you know, got a bunch of parts to chase. But at least the basics are all there. Seemed like it shifted through the gears. Uh, I didn't hear any funky noises. I'm happy about that. Can't wait to take this thing out, put it around. It's a trials bike. It's a totally different animal. First, second, and third gear are really low. It's a I mean, trials bikes are you know riding around real slow without putting your feet down, kind of thing, and going over obstacles. And I want to try that. <laughs> Bad. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to go carry on very soon in the near future with this or you know the the plan was to kind of put it off till winter you see how well that worked out didn't you <laughs> all right guys well, i'm gonna wrap it up i want to thank all you for kind of hanging out in the garage with me and uh, turning some wrenches and having some fun with old rusty crap um nothing better than just taking something that's totally dead and bringing it back to life it's a great feeling for a mechanic so I'm at the uh pleasures of turning wrenches you know all right, guys, so I'm going to go shut her down. I want to thank all for kind of hanging out in the garage with me, as I said, and doing some wrenching. And if you would, give me a thumbs up. It helps the video out. Give me a thumbs down. If you don't like it, leave a comment, too. I really enjoy the comments. You guys are, you guys are an awesome group. You really are. You really uh, helped change my life. All right, until the next one, I'll see you.